Well, here we are. It's probably time we did a um, did a quick update on the Land Cruiser. I've been working on it. <laughs> haven't stopped working on it. Just um, just keep going with it. But we'll just go for a quick walk around, let you have a look. The um, they're our new wheels and tyres. They're ROH rims, Australian company, designed in Australia, not necessarily made. Toyo tyres out of Japan. We've got Lovell's springs and lift kit and all that through under the front. Um, with the lift kit, um, because we've become a, a part a heavier vehicle, we had to have indicators that could be seen in the mud guards, be seen from the back, so we had to have new indicators on. We've got the clear view mirrors, which I think I've shown you before. They they pull out for towing and they're full electric, as in um, electric adjustment on the top here, not the bottom. I didn't get the electric fold, I, I didn't think that suited the car really. So they can just go in. If we open the door here, we've got the overhead console, that's all done. We have the UHF all finished, we have an extension speaker there, there's also a speaker in the microphone. All the controls of the UHF are in the microphone there. And that's a nice tidy console, I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. Um, the computer on the dash, we'll do a... We'll probably do a bit of a, um, a look at that at another date. That's what bring him on. Yeah. The aerial automatically goes up once the power comes in. And that's a computer. Um, that's a full computer. Um, we've got all our, oh yeah, we've got our Spotify, our YouTubes, um, Play Store, um, Wiki Camps, you know, to find camps. Um, our HEMA mapping software. I can hop into OBD2 here and um, I can set up any gauges I want so I know the coolant and all that sort of thing. The speedo, I was hoping it was GPS. See, we have a GPS signal here. It's starting to lock in on the satellites. You can see him there. I was hoping the speedo was actually worked off the satellites, but it's not. It's actually worked off the engine itself, so um, off the signal coming. There's our GPS latitude and longitude, where we are in the world at the moment. The coolant's 31 degrees C. It's 10.04 on the 7th of March to 2021. The engine's not going, we've got no revs. So look, that's a good thing. Um, I am a bit pleased with that. Now, down the back there you'll see an aerial between the seats. That's a Selfie aerial, it's a Selfie Go. And that brings our phone signal into the cabin from a big aerial up on the roof. So that's not too bad. Um, that's coming along okay. Now the, the snorkel there, we're still waiting on Safari to supply the snorkel. Everyone's having trouble with supply at the moment. It's just the nature of it. Now, when we come and have a look inside here, yep, you can just see in there. We have a water tap there, and in here, that one there, that's air. We have air on air receptacles on both sides of the vehicle. The toolboxes from Melbourne, they're an Aussie company. We got them all done. Now the When we lift up in here and have a bit of a look, that's where the compressor sits, up in there. It's fan cooled, so that's a good thing. This is for the lights. We have lights sitting up in the doors here, and the lights can be white or yellow, and we can dim them and all that with that control. Um, we've put a, a hot water system in there. Now, the hot water system it's a standalone unit that runs on lithium and a little gas tank. We've got the bush dunny there. And look, at the moment we're just fitting stuff in, working out where it all goes. And Brax racks, that's all organised. So that's looking good. I've got a couple of stoves in there. I'm just trying to fit stuff in. Now, 
Up on the top here on the roof rack, we've got the back canopy on. And on the roof rack here, we have a thing called Brax Rax, or Rax Brax, R-A-C-K-X, B-R-A-X. I'll probably do a video on that alone. And the benefit of that is we can pull the pin here, we can lift our canopy, our awning off and put it up in the shed so it's not out in the weather all the time. We've got the solar panel, the 100 watt solar panel on the front and the GME 2.2 watt aerial on a fold down bracket for if we need to go anywhere. Um, the toolbox at the back here, once again, I'm just trying to fit stuff in. And if you look up in there, you can just see the fuel filler. And look, it's good to fill. I, I did that and I thought, oh geez, I hope that's okay to fill. And um, look, it's great. I, I took it downtown and did it. That's just tent pegs and things like that. So the other thing I've done probably since we last had a video, I've got one of the spare tyres sitting on the back and it's on a on a tray. We've strengthened the whole lot. We actually slid this slid the whole canopy back here and we've we've put strengthening angle lines in the back end in the side there and bought a strut right up to the top. So look, that's that's good, that's not going anywhere. I still have to do the night lights, I've got to make a bracket for them. The I, I did all the countersunk Allen head screws in the wheel carriers. That looks nice and tidy. I bought these off Dun and Watson. You can see the the writing in there. Then we've got the 1.7, 1700 mil long rear drawer at the back, and so we use that as a kitchen bench. And then that's where Jude's there buggering around, getting a bit of stuff. Just working out what we can fit in there and the guy ropes for the awnings. The awnings are ordered, um, not here yet. We're waiting on everything at the moment. It's been a bit of a slow build because we are waiting, so that can lock down. We've got the X-Rox X-Bar, Heyman Reese X-Bar, sitting at the back there. And yeah, we, we've got the seven pin plug and I, I fitted that a few weeks back now. And there's our seven pin. Um, same toolboxes on this side. Gives us a lot of clearance there. Um, it's not looking too bad. The bracket at the top there, that aerial bracket, that swings up. That's for the phone booster so we can boost our signal. Now, we've got the fridge on the drop down slide in here and up through the back there we've got some of the electrics. I might just drop this fridge down. So I've got it on MSA drop slide so it drops out of the way. And up in through the back there, now I'll see if I can get in clear enough for you to see, there you go. There's our battery monitors. So at the moment the solar is only putting in 4.5 amps and the main lithium batteries are sitting on 13.7 volts. Now in behind where that black panel is, there's a lithium battery there. So um, yeah, that does all the, that, that's what's powering the back canopy here. Now the self I go, that's the, that's the unit there that does the phone boost. Um, there are our switches. When I want the air compressor on, I just hit that. And so I've still got a head of air from yesterday. So, but you can hear the fan in the other compartment kicking in, just to keep it cool. Then, we bought this the other day, I'll come around. I suppose some of you in other countries will find this interesting, just the way we do stuff here. Now, oh, just, you'll have a bit of bullshit there to look at, there's a bloody caravan you can look at in the meantime. So. You can see nephew Ray's caravan. He was here yesterday. He's gone to see his kids at the Gold Coast. And uh, him and Shireen. And they'll be back on Wednesday. So that'll be okay. I'll just stop this for a minute. Okay, that's what I had to have two hands to fit. So when the fridge slide drops down, 
so you can actually see in the fridge we've got an extension housing sitting on there now that I had to modify and that's so when you're looking for something in the fridge and something's on top you can just put it out and sit it there we can also sit a little cooker there if we need to so yeah that'll help the old King's fridge that was one I bought off a mate for 300 bucks so I just put a new cover on it just to tidy it up a little bit on the back here um, that solar panel this side that's 160 watt so we're running 260 watts of solar um, and there's another awning to come on this side with those Brax racks as well. Now the front of the car is looking bare still. Well, look that's just how it is. Um, ARB, have, like they're great people, I, I talk to them pretty well every week. Um, the other day I was 38th in line for the bull bar and the side steps. The side steps are going to be a while, the scrub bars and the side steps, but they reckon perhaps in a week or two we'll have the front bull bar and we have the worn winch and all that ready to rock and roll. So um, hopefully they'll have a bull bar before Jude and I go away in a few weeks time and yeah we'll go from there. But oh, it's just it's a pretty good rig, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it and I'm pleased with how it goes and everything so yeah we'll just see, I'll, um, I'll shut down for a second I'll go and lift the bonnet. Right, well we're under the bonnet, and under the left hand side here, this is our start battery. Now, this fella here, that's an auxiliary battery, so when we're winching and that we can run two batteries. Down in through the back there, that little red piece, that's a Red Arc voltage sensitive solenoid. I think it's SB100 voltage sensitive solenoid, so we're running a couple of different battery systems under the bonnet here. So what happens is when we start the car, this front battery, it, um, it, it starts charging with the smart alternator and then once it gets to a certain voltage, um, that voltage sensitive solenoid, it kicks in and joins these two batteries together. So these two then charge as a pair. And so also I've got an override switch with that voltage sensitive solenoid so that from the cab, if I leave the lights on or something and I flatten my start battery, I've got a button in there where I can short, I can join these two batteries back again manually and I can jump start off myself again. So, and then from this battery here, um, we've got all these fuses and all the, all the jiggers set up. And from this secondary battery here, the auxiliary, then we go back through the BC DC charger near the fridge and we start charging lithium at a different rate again. Now the the standard breather that come here, it used to come from here, drop into that pipe there and just go straight into your airbox line. And that's where your engine vapors go, so your ECG blocks up. So we've put a put a catch can in there for that. And that gives us another filter. So that can come off. We can pop this out and we can keep an eye on what oil the engine uses, or the, what, it, what it breathes, and we can keep that out of the ECG valve. Now, this filter here, you'll notice that's not quite hooked up yet. Now, I did a lot of research into fuel filters on common rail engines, and as per most things, there's just a lot of bullshit around, and um, a lot of channels and that are saying you don't want a secondary fuel filter, um, you want to put a new primary one in to get the water out first, but it seems, and I'll run through the theory of that with you. Um, we have the we have the standard Toyota fuel filter here. You undo those three Allen head bolts, you lift that off, and there's your water sensor. So if any water comes into the system, it comes into here. Your light comes on the dash, and you need to stop immediately. And deal with that water, drain it off the bottom or whatever you have to do because if you miss that or you just want to get to the nearest town or something um, you can put water in your common rail fuel system. So, But people are saying put a filter in before there which doesn't make a lot of sense because um, you'd be driving along happily not really realise you've got water in the first filter, it's chock-a-block and until it gets to your second filter you don't realise it's there. But they're saying that that's a, I believe this is a three or a five micron, I'm not 100% sure on that yet. Now, I've chose to use that as my primary because 
if Land Cruiser reckons it's good enough just to have that on, on its own, well that's fine, that's, that's good enough for me. But what I've done with this secondary filter over the back here, that we're looking at, it took me ages to buy it and find it and do the research, but um, I'm using the standard Land Cruiser one as the primary, I'm using this one as a secondary. Now, the research I did, people are saying, don't go two or three micron there because um, your fuel will cavitate and you'll put air into your fuel and the, um, the high pressure of a common rail diesel system, the cavitation will cause problems. And so I can understand that, that that's a fair point. Um, but when you look at a lot of the um, a lot of the ones on eBay and on the market, they're, they're pretty well the same filter head, they're a, a Stanodyne filter head and they're the little 100 series. So what I did, I actually got the filter housing, I've got the bigger 38 tails and all that for it and that filter there, the filter that fits that, fits a John Deere 6930 common rail engine. So. Um, my V8 engine here is a four and a half litre V8 common rail diesel and the John Deere 6930, it's a six cylinder, 6.8 litre common rail diesel engine and this is what they, they have a primary and this is what John Deere are using as a secondary fuel filter. Um, this is the little one, the, the two micron one. So, I had a look at the flow on that and look, if, if that flows enough fuel without hesitation for a John Deere 6930 with a 6.8 litre engine just revving the ring off it all day, like cars, um, vehicles like this, you don't just flog them along all day, where a tractor you can sit her up on 1800, 2000 revs, whatever, and she just roar along full smoke all day with a plough or something behind it where vehicles, it's up and down a lot more normally. So I'm confident that that filter is good enough. I've got to plumb it in yet, as you can see. And so that that fuel filter there, um, I've also got a list on my phone. And if I get out back Australia and I get a bit of dirty fuel, I will have a spare one of these filters with me. I'll also have a spare Toyota one for over the other side. and. I've got the part number, so if there's a John Deere dealership in the town we go to, I can grab a filter. If there's a Ryko Fleet Guard, whatever, I can get a filter to get me out of the can. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's what's been happening under the bonnet, really. This is a stainless steel bracket. We put all that in quite a few weeks ago now. So that's, um, I got that from Western Filters in Sydney. And so, look, that, that'll be a good setup. There's not much more going under the bonnet here. Um, once I get that fuel filter fixed up and plumbed up, well, that'll do it. Well, it looks a little bit dark, but I think that's not too bad. But I've got the 188 steering box. Remember, I, I bought a 188 and I wrecked it. I've got the steering box here, and it's just I've been over sitting there with some of the rubbish. So I'm going to do a series. I'll do a couple of videos on doing the 188 up, but. I thought to start with, I need to get all this frame off. I need to bear a steering box. And this nut here, well, the rust on that. So I thought this might be interesting. See how long it takes me to get this off. We'll just have a go. I've got the nut gun with an inch and an eighth socket, so we'll. Oh, look at that. But I'm pretty sure that's going to be my easiest bit for the day. I reckon the rest of it here, we've got to get a puller, a flying saucer under here and we've got to work out a way of getting this off. So we'll put a bit of possum pee on it first. I've sort of pressure cleaned some of it, but and yeah, so to get the steering box out, we need this steering wheel off and then we can take all this rusty frame away and and that should leave us with a with a steering box, so when I get the time to do the video on it, I can um, have all my ducks in a row and get going. So, yeah, look, I'll um, I'll shut down for a minute. I'll get a puller set up, and we'll see if we can get this pulled off somehow. Okay, first puller I come across in my collection was this 
it's a H puller. It's got solid legs and you can nip him up pretty well, but it is going up under a little bit of plastic under here. The, the steering wheels are made of, um, like a plastic outer with a steel inner. So whether this works or not, I don't know. It's just one I have quite a bit of success with with the little Fergie. So we'll, once again, we'll put a bit of possum pee there. We'll use a nut gun. Just the vibration of the nut gun can help sometimes. So we'll give her a go. Oh shit, Lance. Go the right way, you dick. Too used to bloody down that one way. Okay, is that feeling good? Now we'll lock that in and see. And I'll try and go the Dewey Uppy button this time. Well, that's all right, get some of this plastic shit out of the way. There's the felt. So that might give us a chance to get a foot under under the steel boss on the steering wheel. And the other thing it does, if we can't pull it, we can just get a cold chisel in through here and have a crack at that. So I might grab a hammer and break a bit more of that plastic away, I think. There we go, there's the other half away, so we might stand a good chance now. You can see the boss just there, it's, it's very thin. A couple of hits with a cold chisel we could probably expand it enough to do the job. So yeah, we're a bit lucky we don't need to save any of this. Okay, so now, if we can bring this puller in close enough to get right in under that boss, like that. I think we stand a bit of a fighting chance. Looks like I'll get these right in. Tighten these legs so they can't spread so easily. I don't have much face with this, I, the legs seem to want to um, slide off the edge, I can't get it in close enough. Yes, I'm pretty sure as, a, as I pull on that, it won't come in my favour. Yeah, it's not going to work. Alright, let's get it up.
I'll probably need a better stand under it, but anyway, we just haven't got that today. Still not budging by the look of it. This is the bit I've decided to film because this will give us more trouble than anything else on the whole, whole job, I believe. We might leave it out on another section. Okay, I think we'll go for a little flying saucer and see how we go. I'll give it another soaking possum pee. And see how we go. We can always heat it and there's a lot of options, but we'll just puddle along. Here's a little two-legged puller. It doesn't seem to want to hold in real well. Anyway, we'll give it a bit of a rattle and just see. I've got the little gun for this. Where did I put the socket for that? Well, it's not sure. That's actually moving. Oh, I'll be stuck. I didn't have a lot of hope for that. You need a shed break in a way, the sun's just coming out. Look at that. Bingo. Must obviously have some oil in it. Um, from being tipped up, there's a bit of oil around the top. And it doesn't feel too bad, it feels a bit gritty, but um, yeah, in coming, upcoming videos, over, over the next week or two, we get this wedding over and done with next weekend, and hopefully I can have all this ready and then hop in. So there you go, it came on. Well, there you go. That's the steering box out. Um, yeah, we've got all the rubbish off it, we're just back to a base steering box, so... I'll give that a bit of a pressure clean, a tidy up. Might put a bit of possum pee around here. And we'll just leave that till after the wedding when we get a little bit of time. Perhaps over Easter and we'll strip it down. I've got most of the parts here, I believe. So, yeah, we'll see, see how we go. So that's another little job ready. Well, this is what I've been spending my weekend doing. I've been pressure cleaning. I've still got a bit of cleaning to do down through here between the house and the pool room. So but that's looking pretty good. I've got to clean that grubby barbecue yet. The the back patio here. Kelly's got a <laughs> this is Kelly Dog's chair. It's an old lounge chair. And she sits up there like Jackie, reckon she owns the countryside. But um I've got a pretty sore back in that at the moment. Um if you have a look at the end of the lawn here. Um, we'll probably still do a bit of a mow before all our guests turn up, but right along here We tie Kelly dog up because well, Just recently she learnt as in the last 12 18 months She learnt to jump the fence so before then we could just go to work leave her leave her in the yard here the yards fully fenced and There was no trouble at all, but anyway she learnt to jump the fence in a storm one time so um, 
she sits out here enjoying herself and but what she'd done you can see where the soil's dark there she used to get the shits and like a spoiled child she'd I'd come home and she'd have this bloody big trench dug right along there and so she'd dig a big trench in the lawn sit there and <clears throat> pardon me, make it the right shape for her ass <laughs> and oh she made a mess and all the dirt she'd flick the dirt out onto the lawn and we had a high patch the water wasn't draining across here it'd go down into the into the drain so but she panics when the storm's on and you can see on the sleeper wall here when she gets frightened she just bites whatever's around her and um the sleeper wall here copped a bit of a cane and, but not to worry so <laughs> so on on the weekend or on saturday i come through and i I pressure cleaned all this area here, did the posts and up on the guttering and all that, tidied all that up. I've done the the shoveling and you can see where I've had to cut the top off the grass there just to get a, a reasonable level and then I've dug a little trench so the water, if we get any rain ever, it comes along down there so bloody poop stick, no wonder she's tired. But yeah, the lawn, I need to do a little bit of edging over there yet, but look, the whole place is looking pretty good. Um, as I said before, that's Ray and Shireen's caravan there. And if we zoom out across the paddock there, look, the paddock's looking nice and tidy at the moment. But I'll take you for a quick walk down to the dams and I'll just show you the water level. That's a little bit more of the paddock. I slashed that for the second time just to make sure it was neat and tidy. I've got a few branches and things to pick up, but that's fine, that's, that's looking good. But we swing around, and as you go up to Bundy Bear's Shed, this is the dam on the left of the driveway. Just nothing there. You can actually see the, where are we there? Yep, you can see the pipe. That's the pipe where we used to pump up to the back for the garden water. So there's just no water there at all anymore. Um, no hope at all. Um, if it stays dry, it, I haven't been for a walk down in there yet, but it's possibly dry enough to pull some of those reeds out with the front end loader, if we can. Then some of these trees here, if the dams fill up, they'll die anyway. So I probably should hook on a chain and pull them out of the water. Um, because yeah, the water normally comes up through the pipes that join these two dams together. And this is the dam, that's Bundy Bear's shed up the back there. And this is the dam on the right hand side of the driveway. So I had, a, I did have all those reeds out, but we just got a little bit of rain before Christmas or around Christmas. And um, that was enough moisture there just to get those reeds up and going again. So yeah, look, nothing, no rain, but Surprisingly enough, the paddock is green, so it's what we call over here a green drought. So you get a little bit of rain, just a few scuds, you know, a quarter of an inch, half an inch, something like that, and it makes the grass green, and with the humidity in the air, um, it'll actually shoot off a little bit, the grass, but um, you don't actually get any, any runoff water. So, yeah, look, it's the middle of March now, so we... If um, if we don't get some shortly, um, that's another year we've got to go without water. So anyway, that's just how it works. So eh? that's that's part of living out in a few acres. Okay, well that's it. Thanks for dropping by, everybody. Um, next weekend's a big wedding weekend. Whether I get a shoe done next weekend, I have no idea um, what we can do. Um, my sister's up at the moment, and we've got family up from down south so um, Judy Judy and the girls, uh, my, my mum my sister um, Jude and my daughter Adele they all had a girls day out yesterday, went to the markets and went and had fish and chips for lunch and went down to Alia Heads for an ice cream and, and did all that which was good because I'm not into doing all that stuff much <laughs> so um, so what with family up we'll be spending more time with that so whether there's a stew next week or not I don't know um, Probably not, we'll just see. But um, anyway, look, have a good week everybody. Thanks for dropping by once again. And yeah, look, we'll see you when we see you.